Happy Halloween, everyone. Sally here to teach you how to stitch yourself up for any occasion. Start off with the fresh face clean of any swamp sludge or worm slime. Then grab a purple washable glue stick. Unless you have very light eyebrows that can be covered with makeup easily, run the glue stick backwards through your eyebrow a couple times. Then use it to lay the eyebrow hairs up and flat as possible. Give the glue a minute or two to dry and then set it with some powder. I recommend powdered rat skin, but if it's unavailable in your area, translucent powder will work just as well. If you've got quite thick eyebrows, you can go in again with the glue stick, allow it to dry, and powder it again with the rat skin. This process simply creates a nice solid layer that's much easier to cover with makeup. Next, you're going to start to go in with blue face paint, and then realize perhaps you should cover your eyebrows with concealer first. Then you want to set the concealer with the rat skin. Now you can move to actually covering your face with blue face paint. Avoid the area around your eyes, but make sure to not forget your neck and your ears. Eventually, you'll want to cover your arms and any other bit of exposed flesh. Cover yourself in several layers until you feel like you have a nice, even coverage. Use a blue eyeshadow a bit darker or brighter than your face paint and cover and surround your eyelid in a round shape. Then we're going to use a darker, more muted blue eyeshadow to contour. To make your face appear as round as a baby's skull, you're going to draw a soft C shape around your jawline. Then softly border the rest of your face. You can also use this shadow down the sides of your neck to make it appear slimmer and around your collarbones. You can then contour your nose by drawing two straight lines down the sides of your nose and blending them out. You can then add this eyeshadow to the hollows of your cheeks to highlight your skull. Then grab a small brush and a dark blue, gray, or black eyeshadow because we're moving on to the stitches. Start with a softly curved line extending from the corners of your mouth, reaching just past the edges of your eyes. The next line will start from the upper left side of your face and extend down through your right eyebrow and under your eye to about nostril height. Then connect the dots through your eyelid and define the line a bit more thoroughly with some more shadow. Now to create the base for the stitches. You can follow my arrangement of stitches if you want an exact replica, or you can create your own pattern with various angles and sizes for stitches, and some double stitches for those pesky bits of flesh that keep trying to rip apart. I'm sure you can relate. You will also add a ring of stitches around your neck, looped around your shoulders, and down your breastbone. When you're finished, your lower half will look something like this, and your face will look something like this. Now, if you prefer the look of black stitches, you can stop here or even add more black to define the stitches. But I prefer to define my stitches with some highlight. To give it a bit of that moonlight glow, we're going to grab some white cream face paint and a small brush. Draw a thin line of white paint along the upper portion of each stitch. If the stitch is more vertical and you can't decide which side is the upper portion, just imagine a light hitting your face and draw the line wherever you think the light would hit. Don't worry about it too much. There's no need to be perfect when you're dead. Now grab a white eyeliner pencil and carefully apply it to your lower waterline. This will make your eyes appear large and animated, like you've just seen a ghost. Next, we're going to use some brown frog's tongue eyeliner, or eyebrow liner, or I don't really know what it is, but it doesn't matter. We're going to use it to line our lips. Be sure to define your cupid's bow and don't overline your lips. You can then cover the center of your lips with a blood-colored lipstick if you want a bit of a rosy glow. Next, for the long, spidery eyelashes, apply a thin layer of lash glue to the lash line. Allow the glue to dry for about a minute before applying the lashes to your upper lash line. And no, contrary to popular belief, shaking like I do does not make your lashes stay on better. But hey, it looks like you're all done. You're all stitched up and ready to go meet your pumpkin king. Happy Halloween!